So today's Gospel of the Five Talents is another one of those Gospels that kind of blows out of the water. The uh, teddy bear, Jesus. Um, Jesus is a little, lot more of a grizzly bear than a, than a teddy bear. Like uh, this kind of, you know, soft, do, do, do whatever you want to do. Everything's fine. We're all, we're all going to heaven anyway attitude. That's not what Jesus says ever. Uh, it's simply not in the Gospels. So Jesus here, just let me clarify the whole thing about the talents. And then the last uh, issue I think to to clarify is to give the one talent to the man who has five already and uh, he who has will be given more and he will have more than enough just to clarify what all that means okay so firstly as regards talents um, very often when we speak about this gospel or when we hear this gospel preached about uh, we start talking about gifts and talents right so Jesus gives us different talents so some people are able to play the fiddle some can hold their breath for two minutes some can do a handstand and some can tumble and whatever it is and that's all lovely um, that's not what this gospel is about at all now it's it's not entirely wrong to interpret it that way but that's not what the gospel is about a talent was a measure of silver right so it's about 33 kilos of silver so quite a lot so even one talent is, is a serious honking chunk of silver, right? Uh, that's why, like, you know, he, he talks about money. You, I hid your money in the ground, okay? It's a lump of silver. It's not you gave me the ability to play the fiddle and I didn't use it, okay? Um, it, like it's, so that it's something quite tangible. So the guy who got five talents, 150, 150, 165, 165 kgs of silver, like, that's savage, right? Just, it's, a, it's a big lump of silver. And, uh, and he went and he traded it, and he made five more, right? That's, that's over 330 uh, kilos of silver, like, at the end. You know, like it's, it's just, so he got a lot, and he made a lot out of it. Guy with the two, made the two. The guy who got one, he could have traded, he could have done something with it, but out of fear, he buries it. Now... Uh, we'll clarify the last bit and then that, that will clarify what, what this first bit means we, we can in a way interpret this to mean gifts, talents and abilities as well but uh, it's, I think there's something deeper the Lord's trying to communicate something deeper here okay? because he's talking at the end about effectively uh, the eschatological reality so heaven, hell uh, where we're going after this life you know, we've been grinding your teeth or my, my father's house this is, so this is the context that we're talking about. So now take the talent from him and give, him, give it to the man who has the five talents. For to everyone ha- who has will be given more, and he will have more than enough. But from the man who has not, even what he has will be taken away. Okay. Why on earth would the Lord do that? Why would you take it off the guy who has very little anyway and give it to the fellow who has as I say, over 150 kgs of, 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 of silver made. I mean, uh, it's all good. Why, why, why would he need more? Okay, so what are we talking about? What's the key issue here? I think the key thing here is that everybody has a certain ability to love. Okay, everyone has a certain ability to love. Now, maybe some more than others. Okay, maybe the talents are given according to the person's ability. Not everyone actually has the same ability to do things, okay? Some people have, a, have, a, have a just absolutely fantastic ability to love. You know, if, like, we all maybe, maybe have kind of a granny-type figure in your head. Where's he gone? Oh, a granny-type figure in your head uh, who just is just so loving, right? And uh, every time you go there, you just feel loved and doted on. And then other grandchildren come, and they feel loved and doted on. And then the actual children of said granny... Uh, come and they feel loved and then they're making the tea and making the buns and making the queenie cakes and you know and, and, and everyone who comes here just feels loved even though there are now 20 people in the house who weren't invited and really shouldn't kind of be there uh, but, because it's lockdown but they're all there and they're all feeling loved by granny okay and just the more she gives it seems just the more she has <laughs> you know she can just keep loving and it's just loving and loving and loving and it's, it doesn't seem to run out there are others who, who are much more kind of cage about who they love or how they love um, but the ultimate the most important thing the, 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 what's ultimately important as, as, uh, in the context of our gospel here is that all of us love in proportion to our ability this is the, this is the most important thing this is how we trade okay? we trade when, when we love 
not 100% of the time, but often we're loved in return. And then the more we love, the more we love loving. The more we love loving, the more we love. The more love we get in return. And the more we love. And then the more we love loving, and the more we love. And it's just like this spiral of love, which is amazing. Whereas the more you kind of cage about your love, I mean, I, uh, we just keep everything superficial. Hey, how are you doing? Love the weather. Uh, you know, it's all, it's all good. Just, yeah, yeah, you're there and I'm there here. It's nice. How are you doing? Not that, not that I really care, I'm just asking. You know, um, okay. We all good? Great. Okay, so like, it's, you know, I'm not, I'm not loving here. This is just like, this is walls around my heart here. And this is just like, everyone can just kind of stay outside the walls, if that's okay, thank you very much. Just, there we are, feel comfortable. Again, not that I really care, but just stay out there. And um, so I'm not using my ability to love. I'm not letting my guard down, I'm not loving. So now, the one thing that I'm supposed to do, and even though not everyone is able to love like, you know, like some of these amazing saints or some of these amazing people that you've met in your own lives or some of these grannies or people, they don't necessarily have to be old. Even people here, there's people here who have amazing ability to love children and just want to love them. Uh, um, uh, some people just have just, just so much love to give. But everyone has something, all right? Everyone has something to give. No one here receives nothing from the king as he's leaving. Five, two, or one, but no one receives nothing. They all get something. So with that ability, trade it, use it. But what can happen is, you know, I get, I have, a, have a certain ability to love, but it's just too dangerous, it's just too risky, it's just too, I don't know, it's, it's not worth it. So no, no, I'll just kind of, I'll tip away now, I'll work away from myself, but uh, no, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not delving into this, this, this whole love thing, because... Uh, it's not worth it. But then you see, we get to this mis very dangerously misunderstood word. And we've said this before here, but we, it, it, it's no harm to, to go over it again. But what is love? What is love? Now, our exceptionally intelligent society these days says love is love. Well, that's, that's great. Um, <laughs> Because the last time I checked, cabbage is cabbage. <laughs> you know, a spare tire is a spare tire. That, that's great. That's, that's not exactly helping us understand what the thing is. Okay? Because in our, in our Christian understanding, God is love. God is love. And again, developing our Christian understanding of love, the cross proves love. Self-sacrifice proves love. Okay? Emotions and hormones do not prove love. They actually have very little to do with it and they can have an awful lot to do with love's opposite, which is lust. So we, this has to be really, really clear. Because interestingly, isn't it so interesting, that when people say love is love, what they mean is love is whatever you want it to be. Isn't that interesting? Cabbage is cabbage, but cabbage can be whatever you want. That's clearly a carrot, my friend. You can't call it a cabbage. Yeah, but for me, it's a, for me, it's a, for me, it's a cabbage. It's, it's not. <laughs> like, lo love is love, in today's terminology, actually means love is whatever you want it to be. Isn't that completely nonsensical? I just thought of that. But anyway, um, <laughs> it's just, it, act it actually, it, it, we, like, when you think about it, it actually makes no sense. So, in our Christian understanding, God is love, and love is self-sacrificial. Now, that's concrete. So that means then that when we have a certain quantity of love or a certain ability of love given to us, okay, it makes us more godlike. It makes us more like God. It makes us like God to love. It makes us like God to sacrifice ourselves. It makes us like God to be merciful. And why is all of this important? Again, because heaven isn't just a better place than earth. Heaven is being taken into God where we share in his divine nature. Now, if he is love, in order to be taken into his divine nature, which is love, I have to learn to love. That's the whole point of the gospel, that I learn to love with the ability that I have. And even though there are greater and lesser, uh, lesser abilities, there are incredible martyrs out there, there are incredible people who, who have suffered for the faith grievously for generations, and people have been imprisoned and beaten and the whole lot, and yet have still remained faithful to the Lord. I've never gone, anything, I've never gone through any kind of suffering like that. I've, we've, we've had such an easy, easy go of things in comparison to, 
to our persecuted Christian brethren. But, and I would hope that, 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 that this is a proof of their, of their greater love than mine. They deserve a greater glory in heaven, and I'm delighted for them. Really, they deserve it. So, but all of us have a certain ability. So the question then is, is what are we going to do with it? What do we do with our ability to love? Do we use it? Do we, as such, like using the gospel terminology, do we trade it? Do we give it? Do we risk it? Or do we just play it safe, dig a hole and bury it and say, now, now, now we're all good. Now, now nothing can go wrong. And then deprive the world of our love. And deprive ourselves of the ability to become like God. Obviously, obviously, when I say become like God, we understand that we don't become like God without God. We become like God through God. Holy communion. We, we enter into a holy communion with God to become like him. You know, we're not stealing divinity. It's a gift being given to us that God wishes to share his own nature with us. So the gospel today, it's, uh, it's very, very beautiful. It goes way beyond how long you can hold your breath and if you can do a handstand. This is our ability to be like God here on earth and to bring love to where there is none, to bring light to where there is darkness, to bring consolation to where there is suffering. And this is done through you and I, through people who selflessly love. So we ask the good Lord to renew in each one of us our ability to love and to deepen our ability to love. And if we are those people who have this one talent and are afraid to use it, that we will be healed of our fear. Lord, that you will heal us of our fear to love, our fear to let down our guard, our fear to let people in, our fear to sacrifice ourselves in case we end up with less. Because to whom much is given, even more shall be given, and he will have more than enough. Amen.